Hello, this is Dr. Stephen Evans, the Editor-in-Chief and Publisher of OutClick Magazine. Today we're very excited to welcome Rochelle Wolberg, who is the Curator and Director of the Mounts Botanical Garden of Palm Beach County. Rochelle, welcome. Hi there, thank you, Stephen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's get you uh, up here. Oh, click it again there. There we go. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Tell us, we've been chatting about the, the garden, and it is just such an extensive uh, an experience, and there is so much to do there. Tell us a little bit about the history of it, if you'd like, uh, and what's going on there. Uh, well, a lot of exciting things are coming up, um, but actually, Mount's Botanical Garden is the largest and oldest public garden in Palm Beach County. It's 40 years old. Um, the site has been here though for almost 70 years and um, it started off as a three and a half acre horse pasture for four okay. um, and it's it's evolved into this wonderful 14 acre tropical paradise um, and I think what's special about the mounts is it is a public private partnership between Palm Beach County um, and their cooperative extension department and okay not-for-profit uh, Friends of Mounts Botanical Garden, which has been instrumental in, in really crafting uh, the botanical garden as we have it today. Mm, mm. And you all are just reopening um, after, uh, after being closed? Yes, uh, you know, everyone is experiencing this. I think one of the advantages that we have is that we are outdoors. So we were able to get um, part of that first wave of openings throughout the county. Um, mm -hmm opened june 16th after a three-month closure stephen okay on time for us um and um and our opening approach right now is actually it remains a phase one heavy restriction approach so i think the biggest impact of COVID 19 um has been that we um you know can only allow uh really 50 percent of our normal capacity at any given time Okay, I, you had a picture of your staff. If you want to show, show that, show yeah, that. Let me, let me pull that up right we can, now. We can pull that up. Your staff has been working very hard to keep the grounds open and going and uh, and 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 growing really. And um, it doesn't that kind of thing doesn't stop just because of COVID. Uh, but I know you and your staff has been working very hard. Yes, we've been working really, really hard. And uh, let me go right ahead with that. Do you all see that? Okay. Uh, yeah, so we'll have Arthur uh, push that okay, in for perfect. us. Okay, perfect. Great, yeah. thanks, yeah. Arthur. Um, yeah, and so you can see all of us. This was actually taken the last week in May, which is National Public Gardens Week. Okay. Uh, and we were still closed, but we wanted to assure because we were just getting inundated with uh, messages from our community and from our members. You know, is the garden closed? It, you know, is it becoming a jungle? Do you need help? And maintaining it and we were all working throughout that three-month closure um you'll see members of my horticulture team and our admin team um you know face coverings were certainly in full force we're social distancing but this was kind of um just just a message of, of assurance that we were still here and that we were working to keep the garden beautiful in anticipation of our reopening mm, that's exciting that, that yes. that's great i know your staff i've so got i got my hand on my hip and i'm holding um a sugar, um, a sugar bloom from one of our palm trees. It's a dried up bloom. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, let's pull up the website. Uh, you have uh, okay. so many different areas of the, we're going to remove this. Uh, this is mine. Uh, this is the, let me get to my screen. You've got so many different areas of the garden. Uh, we want to show that. You have multiple, multiple uh, areas. If you want to talk about any of these, it's just fascinating. Yeah, let me go ahead and see. Um, so, you know, as I as I'd mentioned before, um, you know, whereas you have some of the larger gardens are gardens of vast collections. Mount's Botanical prides itself on being a collection of gardens. So we mm -hmm. have five individual display gardens. Um, okay. 14 acres and you know you'll notice the rose and fragrance garden at the very top um and if you scroll down just a little bit more one of our more popular gardens everyone loves it is our tropical wetland uh garden windows on the floating world um that serves as a as an outdoor classroom for us and and yeah it's right there and the purpose of the 25 display gardens is um, we are part of the Cooperative Extension Department, which is affiliated with the University of Florida. And so we really treat this as a learning environment. 
And um, we want to convey to our visitors that whether you have 10 acres in Jupiter Farms or you only have a balcony in Del Rey, you can grow up to 95% of what you see in our garden, whether it be in a container, in or out, or directly into soil. Okay. Uh, so as you visit all of these different areas, um, you can absolutely replicate and take inspiration from what's possible. Okay, so this is not just a place for people to come and view, it's also a learning experience Absolutely. for them to grow. You, you and I were chatting earlier, I do not have a green thumb. Uh, <laughs> yes. The, the joke is my house is full of uh, fake tropical plants, but it sounds like you have a, <laughs> a learning opportunity for people to uh, be able to grow their own foliage and um, to replicate some of this yeah. in their home or outside their home. And you know, and I've been able Yes, outside their home. I've been able to learn. I mean, I do not have a natural green thumb. Um, I do come from a family of farmers. My maternal grandparents were from Basque, Spain. Um, they immigrated to the Philippines and were agriculturists. We grew sugar cane and everything. But I am ashamed to say it skips like two generations um, because I do not have a green thumb. So I have had to make do from my experiences learning here. And you have up our, our you know, you had previously up our Mediterranean garden. Um, right. So I'm really good with succulents and cactus because they're not high maintenance at all. They don't require a lot of care. Um, um, and also the fiddle leaf fig, a lot of our indoor plants. But yeah, if you are a novice gardener or you are a bona fide garden connoisseur, avid gardener, you can still draw lessons and inspiration when you visit Mount's Botanical. Okay, okay. What, uh, what is your, what, do you have a favorite one of these? You know, I love, let's see, let's just, uh, let me see if I can uh, pull that up. Um, if you want to pull up the Sun Garden of Extremes, you actually have it right there in the bottom row all the way to your right. Yes. Okay. I love it. Um, you know, when you, let me see if I have a picture of mine that I can screen share, but it feels like it came out of like a Dr. Seuss book. Okay. Um, you know, it's, uh, Sun Garden of Extremes is very special because, it's a lot of different textures and colors um, and it showcases the resiliency of these plants. I'm going to pull up um, this for screen share, Stephen. Okay. Um, again, okay. low maintenance, not a lot of water, a lot of sun, which, hey, if you're in South Florida, that is our environment 90% of the year. Okay. Um, even when you're dealing with hardscapes, you can really make it... Um, you know, you can make it beautiful and it doesn't mean that everything that you have to plant is only green or dry or, or not lovely. Um, you know, you can work with a lot of different uh, types of plant specimens. And it is, it's actually one of the other, it's a popular garden. The children love it, which is amazing because <laughs> that's the garden that often, you know, um, you know, that I fear, you know, you'll have a child, you know, fall on cactus, but it doesn't happen. I mean, they just, it, it feels like they're walking into a Dr. Seuss book and it's like the land of the truffle, uh, the truffle trees. You know, you see great tall palm trees, again, a lot of color, um, a lot of different textures, you know, almost out of this world, um, you know, type of species that we have in our sun garden of extreme. So it's one of my favorites. And, and interestingly enough, it's directly across a completely dichotomous garden, our begonia garden, which is very high maintenance. It's only separated by a three foot pathway. And where here you have, um, you know, minimal water, high sun. The begonia garden is lots of water and very little shade. So they're two yeah. different environments. But this is one of my favorites. Okay. And then how do people, do you have like a written documentation or how do people learn about the different types of plants uh, as they're touring the gardens? Yeah, we, we definitely, you know, we have invested in interpretive signage um, so that each, okay. similar to a museum, you'll have labels. Um, okay look up we also have an audio tour so they can just scan it on their phone um okay. you know more about the garden and one of the services that we provide is obviously um you know the classes that we have and certainly with covid we've invested more in virtual um you know in virtual classrooms that you can live stream so we have all of that a plethora of that that catalog yearly um to inform our visitors uh, of what's possible Okay. And how long would it take to go through um, all of the gardens? Is, is this like a multi-day uh, trip? Should, it, sounds, it sounds like it would take a long time to go and visit all of the different ones um, for people to see. You know, I think if you're, um, we have a lot of tourists who come here to visit and it typically takes them anywhere 
from 45 minutes to an hour just to get a flavor of our landscape and a lay of the land. Okay. Uh, we find, um, but when you return, sometimes, I mean, you can spend, you know, so I think a very general tour is about 45 minutes to an hour, but I have absolutely seen visitors here for three hours on only four of our display gardens. You know, okay. they kind of want to walk through, take a lot of pictures. Um, and, you know, another one of the services that we provide is uh, we is it's actually not a part of the Mounts Botanical Garden. As I said before, uh, Mounts Botanical is part of the uh, Cooperative Extension Service, and they have a master gardener hotline. And so when our visitors come here and they take images, they can email it to the hotline, or they can actually directly engage with our team via social media uh, to just say, hey, what plan is this? I love this. You know, do you have the Latin name for this? Or, you know, um, um, or do you have, um, you know, can you recommend three other varieties of this rose? And we are really engaged on social media. I've also seen visitors from the Northeast um, who actually, you know, come down and, and have moved down and they say, you know, this was another favorite. Do you have a Southern substitution for us? And, you know, so um, that kind of, of engagement um, is the way that we communicate with, with those who, who want to learn more and, 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 and want to dig right, right in and start planting. Okay, that's that's fascinating. I didn't realize yeah. that that was so much more a part of it. And there, the classes are online right now. Have you moved those to online? We've moved them online um, okay. on our website, and I'll I'll just pull it up and do a screen share. We have a okay. feature, uh, called Visit Virtually. Okay. And, you know, we are um, as part of Visit Virtually. We actually highlight a number of our gardens. We we go a lot more in depth. Um, with it. And let me just uh, open that up. And, um, and we also have a catalog of our tours and things. Currently right now, we're actually finishing one of our exhibits. Um, it's our ribbit exhibit, uh -huh. um, which was so wonderful. Uh, absolutely a lot of fun. And I'm just going to scroll down. Um, but this is our vir uh, visit virtually page when you go to mounts.org. Uh -huh. When you go on the landing site, if you, you know, as you move to the page, you'll see our frog blog, which was exhibit specific, our garden highlights, the youth programs, um, connecting with nature, our YouTube channel. And I think our youth programs, um, you know, when you start exploring them, you'll see some of the live streams that we've had. We had live streams actually that are also put on our Facebook page. We just did one on space plants, Stephen. Hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, you know, and then we did one on wicked and naughty plants. That was okay. Actually a, you know, an enjoyable one. Okay. Um, but, you know, our team has, what COVID has done is it, it's, it's actually also forced us to, to think more creatively about engaging the community, engaging wow. our members, um, if they're still hesitant about coming out. And it's actually been able to help them still feel emotionally connected to Mounts Botanical. And that's okay. been the goal. Yeah. Show the, uh, uh, go back to the ribbit exhibit. That was oh, um, sure. Yeah. Go back yeah, and have me, Arthur pull that one back in. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can just pull that up a bit. Um, that was a fun, is that still going on or is that? No, it's actually, you know what? Okay. Yeah. Let me see if I can uh, pull up just a better image. Um, that was a fun exhibit. I saw that one. Well, I have a funny story to tell you when, okay. When the exhibit came up and we had the, um, let's see, let me just look over here. Um, yeah, let me, I'll, I'll pull up the frog blog. But when okay. we had the exhibit come up and we had the artist here, I wore a Miss Piggy shirt. Do you okay. know uh, Yes. I totally did it. And I was, you know, sitting next to Emerson, our, our, our coffee drinking connoisseur. And okay, so I've got it pulled up and I'm going to go ahead and pull on the, the frog blog. And so our visitor engagement uh, manager, Mallory Cotter, um, what she did for us is she took all of the, the different sculptures and kind of gave us a behind the scenes. Here is um, uh, Jacques-Emile Blanchette's uh, painting okay. by our pines. And then um, here we have Axel looking out onto our Lake Orth. Um, one of my favorites, let's see, is Diana the Huntress. Okay. And uh, let's see, does she have, and you know, we put our froggies to work as you can see. <laughs> um, That's um, awesome. Of the garden and let me just see if we can pull this up. I'm going to do, I'm going to try to do another screen share with you. Okay. Uh, Cause we've got a lot of, actually, let me see if, if I can pull up um, 
our our mount's instagram page okay stop sharing now and then let me see if i can pull that up but it was a really terrific exhibit you know and um, you know, I'll tell you what, it was it was really fun. We saw an uptick in the number of children that came to the garden. They really, and I think because each of the frogs had a name, um, mm -hmm. they kind of treated them like Disney characters. You know, they had their own personalities. They were great for photo ops. So um, we've had a really terrific time with it. We actually extended it an extra two months and um, the Cobbs are coming, um, uh, James uh, Cobb and his wife. And we'll actually, their last day will be this Sunday on the 19th. Okay. Uh, now, how is best for people when they want to know what's coming up? You have an email list that they should be signed up for? Yes. Uh, you know what? Uh, the best way they can do it is, um, you know, they can, if they go on the Mount's website, they can actually subscribe to our email list. Okay. And right now, we'll actually send our, our announcements to over 6,000 households. Okay. Um, very easy. They can just subscribe. They can unsubscribe anytime. But if they are looped in, um, you know, they get uh, weekly and monthly announcements. Okay. Uh, Everything what are, that's happening. And what, what are your hours right now, now that you're back open? What are the hours? Yeah. So our hours are 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Okay. You know, we wanted to, um, we, we know that it's incredibly hot, Stephen. And so, um, you know, we've opened an hour earlier um, so our visitors can enjoy just that early, you know, just another hour of cool air. It's from nine to three and we're open Tuesdays to Sunday. Tuesday to Sunday? Yeah. This, this sounds like a, a great opportunity for visitors to see our wonderful tropical landscape here in Florida. This also sounds like a really great date opportunity to take, so, to take yeah. a date, to take a date out and it's something besides uh, the normal thing, but it sounds it, this sounds kind of like a romantic thing to take someone to go and uh, topics of conversation. You know, I love that you said that because I was almost going to say it's a cheap date opportunity. <laughs> I like cheap date opportunity. Yeah, That's great. It's a cheap date opportunity. Um, you know, we see a lot of couples strolling through the garden. Um, obviously, you know, right now, I mean, everyone is seeking the solace and the tranquility of nature. Mm -hmm that we can provide and and so um yes it you know i would definitely say it's it's a terrific hot spot if you want to instagram photos or if you just want to do a, a cheap date and you want to impress your significant other <laughs> i have a big rainbow umbrella that we can carry around and make our own shade that would be a lot of fun and um spur a lot of conversation this sounds like a really fun date uh that's Absolutely. totally totally out of the box thinking yeah mm -hmm. Uh, do you have food opportunities on site or is that something they should do beforehand or? Yeah, they, you know, they should do that beforehand as part okay. of our, our phase restriction. Um, okay. Actually um, are not having picnics anymore and we removed all of our picnic tables. Okay. Uh, do sell beverages and, you know, you're walking into the foyer right now that looks right out into the Rose Garden. There's our Koi Fountain and, and you just see it's just very lush. It, it truly is a tropical paradise. But although we have beverages, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to bring a light snack because you are walking. It is outside. Uh, it takes about 45 minutes. So, you know, just to replenish you, just to make sure that blood sugar doesn't go down. Okay. Okay. And how much is it to get in right now? We had that uh, on there. What are tickets to get in for now? Um, for non-members, it is ten dollars. Okay. Um, in and children um, who are uh, between five and twelve is five dollars, and our members are are free. And okay. if you have a reciprocal membership, I'm actually just going to pull this up. This is a great um, um, screenshot of of looking out onto our um, our color and shade island. You see that that beautiful bromeliad, that flame bromeliad in the in the foreground. Um, but we are part of the American Horticulture Society's reciprocal program, which okay. is 260 gardens. And if you're a member of that, when you become a member of Mounts Botanical, you automatically receive that as a member benefit, which enables you, if you show your Mounts Botanical Guard, to get in for free um, to botanical gardens across the country. Okay. Um, and, you know, we have a discount for our reciprocal members, but it is $10 uh, for adults and $5 for children. Okay. So is this a, the membership, is that an annual membership and then let you get in for free all year or how does that work? Yes. Yeah, it is an annual membership. And if you sign up now, we're giving two months in addition. Um, uh, if you renew your membership, we're giving two months, um, but it is an annual membership. We have ones for individuals and ones for our families. Okay. Uh, 
and you know the it, it gives you access to the garden when we reopened we actually um limited the first week to just members only before okay. we opened to the general public so um you know and you also get discounts at in our nursery um and our gift shop and actually our gift shop right now is having our christmas in july sale okay okay well, that sounds like fun we need to come shopping <laughs> yes yes what kind of item, what kind of items do you have in the gift shop um, you know, we have anything from traditional garden items like gloves and, um, okay. you know, and garden tools um, to these beautiful uh, bamboo um, Monstera decorated uh, plate platters. Um, we've got a lot of, you know, there's incense, there's jewelry. We have um, uh, our jewelry items right now and, you know, things for the children, coloring books. Um, we actually have our garden to go kits. Um, okay. which we have just put out. So if you have a child and you're trying to find something for them to do because they're at home and they've been home for the last five months, um, these garden to go kits have five different um, activities that are easy to do for the whole family. Hmm. Hmm. Well, it sounds like there's a lot to do there and the grounds are just beautiful. They're just beautiful. Thank and you. it sounds like an opportunity and it sounds like there's something there for everyone, whether it's if you're going by yourself or a date mm -hmm. or a family or your children, this is an opportunity for everyone to have something to experience there. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Well, thank you. Is there anything you wanted to cover we didn't go over? No. Um, you know, I'd love to do this again. And next time I'm going to take your tip and do it on a phone so I can actually give you guys, a, you know, a live virtual tour. Um, you know, just want to let the community know uh, we will get through this. Mm -hmm. um, lot of lessons to be gleaned from the garden you know sometimes you have periods and cycles of flocks and where it seems you know that that nothing is growing but out of that comes a season of, of bountiful beauty and so just want to encourage everyone to continue staying safe to stay well to stay positive and if you definitely want some tranquility and calm um, you know our garden is open for you mm. there's uh, I've talked to a lot of people I think more so in the last month that are struggling with some depression issues or struggling with a lot of uh, a lot of just issues, a lot of anxiety issues um, and a day out in the sunshine, a day out with nature, I think would be very therapeutic for them to get away, maybe take a couple of friends. Uh, this sounds like a great um, kind of emotional energy boost that I would encourage people to come and, and get away and get out of the house. It's very easy these days to sit around and, and kind of close in um, and a day a, a day to get out with nature. Um, here's a challenge. Get out and do it. Leave your phone in the car. Um, and just. Yes. Yes. And um, I, I know there's a lot of pictures. There's a lot of op opportunities maybe to take your phone, but maybe a challenge yes. is to go spend one hour at, at mounts, uh, but lock your phone in the trunk and uh, no technology and just enjoy the grounds with no technology. Maybe that's a challenge on one day to completely disengage and experience the gardens with no, I don't know if I could do it, but <laughs> it's, it's uh, maybe a challenge of something to do. So that's yeah. one thing maybe to think about. So. I love it. I love it. Absolutely. Um, you know, our mission is to inspire and educate through nature. Mm -hmm. And um, and because we do have a phase one approach, the blessing is you're not going to have a lot of, of, of crowds um, and we have opened earlier. So, you know, if you are feeling, um, you know, stir crazy and you're feeling like you just need a respite, um, you know, Mounts Botanical certainly affords that. And, and you know what? The, the power and restorative um, power of nature is, mm -hmm. is just so, un, you know, um, you can't say enough about it, Stephen. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if they go, they should definitely write about their experience tag and tag it on the Facebook uh, on their Facebook page about their experience and their relaxation experience. So that's amazing. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, we're going to put up uh, your links on how they can find you on the website, your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube page, and some your other uh, online. So. Perfect. Well, thank you for this opportunity. It was such a pleasure. And I hope to see you at the garden. Spin Thanks. by and leave your phone in the car. Leave your phone. In the That's a tough one. I don't know if I could do it. I'm or gonna not, hold you to it. <laughs> we're going to see what that would be like. But thank you, Rochelle. And uh, please keep up such the grounds pleasure. as I know you're doing it. And uh, we will talk to you. Uh, and you can text okay. OCQ to 22828 for more information on us. Thank you, All Rochelle. Right. See you later. Take care. Have a great one. Thank you. You too. Stay well. Bye-bye.